There's a new special edition PS5, but you probably won't get it. What is Sony forcing devs to do now? Even more stuff has leaked from the summer PS5 showcase. How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. I'm sorry my voice is a little hoarse. I went to see my favorite band Hot Mulligan last night and I sang every song. I'm here with Ray Trevino. Signing out checks and giving them out and giving them gonna be. <laughs> Who is Wo Long? Uh, I, I, I never met Wo Long. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I beat the whole game. I don't know <laughs> where he is. Yeah, Wo Long out this week. You can get it on PS5. Uh, Destiny Lightfall out this week. Not great. So leading up to E3 here, we've heard that Nintendo is skipping out of E3, not because for any big reason, they just said we don't really have anything we need to show around E3, so we're not going to be at E3. Sony hasn't been at E3 <laughs> since like 2017 or 2018, and Xbox is not doing anything at E3, but Xbox Theater is like next to the LA Convention Center, and they're doing like a summertime showcase during E3, so it's like the same amount that Xbox is usually at E3, but people are really looking at Sony and saying, what's going on with this showcase? I mean, this last day to play, what, what would you give it out of five? <laughs> It was really nothing. I'd give it like that a one. Was, yeah, I mean, more Resident Evil 4. Uh, that seemed cool. But outside of that, I was like... Um, I'm kind of mad I watched like... that Resident Evil trailer because so much stuff in it was from the end of the game. It was like from the that whole back half of the game yeah. was in that trailer. And I was like, oh, cool. That would have been a nice surprise. Then we heard that the reason that the state of play wasn't so great was because of the showcase. They're saving all their big stuff for the showcase. What do you want to see at this showcase, Ray? Me? Me? I don't know. Uh, really, the only update I'm looking for is Spider-Man 2, honestly. Yeah. Do you think Spider-Man 2 is going to have co-op? <sighs> Or do you think it's going to be like, you know how in uh, like God of War, you play as Atreus, you play as uh, Kratos. I almost said you play as God of War. <laughs> you play as Kratos. They each have their own skill tree. You build them out through the game. Do you think it's going to be like Spider-Man, Peter Parker has his own skill tree? And then you switch off Miles, Miles Morales, Morales. Maybe Venom. You think we're going to get to play as Venom? Oof, oof. I'm kind of thinking, so for answer me this first before I go on Riddle with my this. stuff. Riddle me this. Is it lie. coming out for PS4? No. It's no, not. they said it's next gen. That could open up a whole m lot more possibilities than right. with just working with the PlayStation 5 hardware and not doing old gen. I would be cool to kind of see like a Gotham Knights done right with this game, like, <laughs> like untethered co-op, like you're going around, swinging around. It would be, uh, probably yeah, it would be not going to be the case. Maybe a little too ambitious. Dude, that would be awesome if it worked like, you know, Death Stranding or like a Souls game where it just randomly populates your world with a Miles Morales if you're playing as Peter Parker or vice versa. So you see him like swinging around doing his own thing, but it's not yeah. affecting your world. That would be kind of cool. I would love to see a multiplayer mode like what we saw in Ghost of Tsushima. Did you ever play the Legends mode? I did. Yeah. So good. Great. I thought that was great. And it was free. That so, was yeah, like super awesome. cool, <laughs> like co op raid type mode. And the raid that they built up to and that was sweet i'd love to see something like that with this new spider-man game where like one person gets to play as peter one person's miles one person is venom and then you guys kind of like go in and do a raid how sweet would that be yeah any open world stuff probably no one multiplayer <laughs> so spider-man 2 i'd say is an obvious lock for whatever showcase this is final fantasy 16 is either either going to come out like right before it or right after it if the timing works out how we all think it is and uh people were kind of curious if final fantasy 16 was going to be delayed and i I believe the quote that was put out was the only way that game will get delayed is if a giant meteor falls on Tokyo. So I think we're going to be good on Final Fantasy 16. We haven't gotten a KOTOR update in a while, right? Like, because last time we heard it was in trouble, right? Yeah. So is are we going to see know, it at the showcase or like if it's a big showcase then i heard they started over on it basically i don't know kotor i think that one's going on ice and if we ever hear about it again it'll be towards the end of the ps5 generation it'll be the new metroid prime 4 is it too much to expect for like packing in wolverine and spider-man into a showcase yeah. you could definitely see wolverine because i think the rumors said that's supposed to come out next year so that'd be a good time to announce it especially since sony likes to announce stuff a little bit early it would be sweet to see ghost of tsushima too i mean we know the movie's coming out right sooner rather than later and everything i've been hearing about the ghost of tsushima's movie 
is like awesome. Like everything about it. Gran Turismo probably will get an expansion. So going back to Ghost, I mean, they are having massive success, obviously, with the congruent run of The Last of Us on HBO and sales of the, <laughs> the yeah. part one of The Last of Us. Uh, so remind me when Ghost of Tsushima movie is supposed to come out. I think next year. Next year, then... I don't see why they wouldn't repeat the strategy of like, okay, there's a movie out and there's a new game coming out. I mean, they already did a director's cut for the first game, so I don't know if they would re-release anything with that unless, I mean... Yeah, I think they'll release it on PC for sure because we heard Nix's has had that done. And they're just sitting on it, basically, waiting for the right time to release it, which I think is smart, right? Like, they obviously are learning that they'll make more money if they release around the TV shows and or movies. Like super no-brainer situation for me i wonder if they'll consider more tv shows versus movies oh yeah because Dude. movies are like yeah i know they have the budget and they're really cool but when you have a tv show it kind of stays in the public yeah, conversation a lot, a lot longer it's like we've been talking about the last of us for i mean weeks now there's tons of stuff that i think they could announce they, they have like the rest of the year pretty wide open though right like uh spider-man 2 and Final Fantasy 16 is pretty much it. So they got to show us some stuff to look forward to in 2024, or even hopefully the rest of 2023. Next up, let's talk about how Sony is allegedly forcing games to be best on PlayStation 5. Have you? This all came out from the whole Activision Xbox situation. Have you heard about this? Have I heard about this Activision Blizzard acquisition? <laughs> Fear that Sony's forcing games to be better on PlayStation 5? I'm shocked. It sounds super nefarious, but then when you look into it, it's really not that big of a deal. What they're actually saying is, like, they want games to run well, which I don't know why Xbox doesn't want games to run well, but that's what a lot that's of devs... That's what you're taking from this? That's what a lot of devs <laughs> have been saying. They're like, there's le way less of a push from Microsoft to make games run at a higher frame rate whereas sony is a lot stricter with how games have to run probably because they pulled cyberpunk from the playstation store and they don't want something like that to happen again but the real bread and butter here is that sony uh, has been pushing a lot of developers to support haptics adaptive triggers and 3d audio which are all the biggest next gen features of the playstation 5. yeah but it's like you know you can tell you know when a game is developed around those mechanics that yeah and you can tell when they're just thrown in just because yeah and I at agree. that point it's like was it I really, really worth it, it in, having um, it i think the callisto protocol i played that game twice i played it on pc and ps5 and it was definitely a much better experience on ps5 just from a consistency standpoint of frame rate and also the dual sense features were really good in that game like yeah really cool Interestingly enough, I think a game like Stray, I'm, that's what's coming to my head, really did well with the controller. It's like when you're needing your little tiny kitty paws and you feel like the pressure on the triggers. But I have both versions of the Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles fighting game what? on PlayStation 5 and on Excuse Xbox. Excuse me? And I'm not... <laughs> what's it called? Demon Slayer colon the Hinokami Chronicles. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I have the PlayStation 5 version of that and the Xbox version of that. And I'm not over on the PlayStation side being like, whoa, like the adaptive triggers are really making me feel like I'm a demon slayer <laughs> versus like when I play it on Xbox. Yeah. It's interesting because since this Activision Blizzard acquisition fiasco drama ongoing kind of situation, there's been a huge spotlight on Xbox being like, OK, if you have Call of Duty, you have incentive to like make it run better on Xbox, uh, offer certain content on offer certain maps and features and then not offer them on other platforms. There's been a huge conversation around like, oh, uh, the ethics of you know, releasing multi-platform games and not and making them uh, comparable on all platforms. And I wonder, like, you know, is Sony going to be under scrutiny for this? I mean, maybe in certain it circles, like I don't a, know. A be cool quick shot for Xbox to take. Be like, look, they're paying for exclusivity on games, like third-party games. And also, they're putting money into these games to make them run and perform better and have better features on the PS5. And we just can't compete because we don't even have the same controller technology as them and blah 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 and if we make it they'll just accuse us of copying them or something like that i guess yeah it's like a huge back and forth situation where you know you, these platforms are criticizing each other i mean like you're yeah. doing this but then they're also 
kind of doing those same things themselves. <laughs> because if you have technology like the DualSense, you want to take full advantage of it. That is right. a marquee feature of the PlayStation 5 and this next generation for PS5. And the tricky part is like these third party games, it's kind of like this weird situation of like, hey, like we'll give you a little extra money if you like throw these features our way. Which and, I'm like, glad they're doing it because I like I've had ev I'm a PlayStation guy, right? I've had every PlayStation console. Everyone since the PS3 has had some sort of gimmick alongside of it. Like the PS3 controller had an accelerometer in it and you could like oh, yeah. fly a dragon with like yeah. in layer, which is like one of the worst games ever. Now the DualSense has these features. I will say the other, like everything I just mentioned except the DualSense, it was only Sony games that were using those features. And it was like, why did you hamstring yourselves by including a touchpad on the DualShock 4 if only Sony games are going to use it? So now, seeing them go out of their way to say, hey, third-party developer, striking distance with the Callisto protocol, we will send some people over from Sony and help you get these features implemented so it doesn't take away from your development of like other consoles. I think that's great. I think that's what Sony should have been doing the last three generations with all this tech. You know, like why make it if you're not going to put in the effort to get other developers to support? it kind of like the feature of being able to switch out the plates on your ps5 which you will soon be able to do with the very first limited edition set of plates and a dual sense controller ray what do you think of the new lebron james edition playstation 5 that's coming out later this year at an unspecified date weirdly enough despite the fact that we know that the ps5 slim is coming out later this year i think xbox took a w here i'm yeah. just gonna say it ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna put on my console warrior hat right here xbox took a w no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's just because we heard about this Grover LeBron controller versus versus LeBron James Le PS5. <laughs> I don't know. I think the choice is clear. I think the Grover choice controller is clear. with the hoodie. Grogu controller with the hoodie, and you can't buy the special edition Xboxes that they did for the Mandalorian. Oh my god! But they look cool. I wish you could because it's on the Series X. You got Din Djarin. You got him in his helmet. Din Djarin. Looking, yeah, I love that yeah guy. bam, bam, boom. And then yeah, on the Ray Series took a X, picture of me Grogu. when I was trying to steal it. <laughs> I caught that boy in the act. I caught him in the act. He's over here talking smack about Xbox, and he wants the freaking special edition one. But I thought this was, yeah, the unspecified date, the statement from LeBron, like, I know the big meme right now is LeCapin. He's just, like, saying, like, these useless, like, doubling down on these, like, lies pretty much he's just always capping <laughs> that's the meme right now and Dude. i was getting that energy from his quote he was like as a kid from akron growing up i was always playing games <laughs> and this is why it's so special for me to have a playstation 5 <laughs> i gotta be honest i wanted to make fun of this but the dual sense like looks pretty cool on it like just being real i'm never gonna buy this because i don't care about basketball like lebron seems cool he's rebooting friday the 13th because he's a huge fan of jason which is another weird lebron fact it is cool though like it's a neat it's a midnight black controller with a bunch of cool pastel sort of almost neon crowns all over it it's got some motivational advice yeah i mean what is it like nothing he said, <laughs> someone someone posted a picture of it and said is this a shot at xbox where it's like everything is earned nothing is given <laughs> It's like, oh my god, that's so mean. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's actually a reference because obviously he plays for LA. And okay. then that was a whole thing oh, with, yeah. like, when he came to LA and then the Clippers, like, kind of, uh, they had signed Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. And there was a whole campaign on the Clippers part saying, uh, built, not bought. Like, they bought uh, LeBron James, they bought the success of their team, and the Clippers are doing it the right way. They're built, not bought. So I wonder if it's, like, an, you know, like, that's something that, he, it, that phrase has shown up on his other merch and stuff and other campaigns. Like, yeah. I've worked for it, like, nothing was given to me. Uh, but I could see, it, so, it's a funny little connection of, like, oh, like, taking a shot at Xbox as they buy developers, blah, 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 <laughs> that's like I, I get that sentiment and I, I playstation's doing a thing this generation where they're like really trying to market outside of the hardcore they just launched this like influencer program called like it's not called playstation stars but it's something close to playstation stars where they're like you can apply to be an official playstation influencer and then now it's like they're going for lebron james i will also say me and friend of the channel cz's world we've been watching football games at a bar there are a lot of playstation ads for the both the playstation 5 that's what Horizon. i'm saying like sony advertises the hell out of sports games and i won't even say 
sports games because I just see their commercials all the time. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, they caught my wife's interest with when they were and during their my campaign. Wife. My wife's interest when they were uh, advertising Horizon Forbidden West. For the first time, she saw a video game commercial and she was like, what is that? Like, what game is that? And I was like, oh, that's Aloy. Like, that's a sequel to Horizon uh, Zero Dawn. Like, blah, 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 blah. It's on PlayStation. And she was like, oh, like, for like they, they're everywhere with the commercials, man. And I think they're doing a good job, especially with that. I know it sounds kind of goofy, like the influencer partnership program, but that's smart on their part. Xbox, because it's I think, like, has, like, killed it with that. Like, make, making sure they get influencers under their little belt like they send out stuff all the time they say they send out stuff that you want to take a picture with which i think is cool like the little grogu hoodie i was like oh i'm gonna put that on my instagram story like they do cool stuff like that and they do activations downtown a lot like we went and saw the stranger things one that was pretty sweet and yeah but playstation i saw they literally just covered a car in spider-man webs in new york like this week to like advertise the ps5 and it's just like on the street so they're doing some cool stuff there too this LeBron PS5, though, not a great first limited edition, I think. I think it should have been Spider-Man 2, maybe Hogwarts Legacy. Yeah, something first party for related. Ragnarok. You know, they already made controllers for both of those games. Why not match up plates to go along with them? That would have been super smart. A Hogwarts the Legacy one us? would have broke the internet. Like, they've already, oh, yeah. they've eclipsed freaking God of War Ragnarok sales already. 12 million copies sold in Hogwarts Legacy. Weeks. They would have absolutely sent people into a frenzy. <laughs>